Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper, and welcome to Cooper Union. What's happening with human rights around our world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Moana Nui Kea. Today, we're looking at ending torture from every country on Earth. Article 11, eradicating torture today for all. And I'm very fortunate to be joined by Otto, who is the head of the United Liberation Movement for West Papua. Otto, thank you so much for joining us today. I thank you very much, uh, Joshua, and aloha for everybody, every listener. Otto, can you tell us why it's so important that no one should be subjected to torture or to cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment in the current situation people of West Papua are facing? Yes, uh, we have been, uh, since we colonized by Indonesia, uh, Indonesian government, uh, treated us as a hum inhumane, you know, racial issue. That was uh, really the base of the uh, uh, inflation beside the, our natural resources. They see that West Papua is empty land. They see that this uh, black uh, curly hair are not uh, uh, human. That's why uh, all this uh, uh, torture was, uh, it's, it's been using as a way, as a part of uh, uh, colonial uh, policy. Uh, Dr. Um, Hernawan, Budi Hernawan, wrote his excellent dissertation about uh, torture as a, as a way of, uh, of, uh, of a colonial way of, uh, as, a, as a show. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, he published as a book uh, recently out of uh, Australian National University. So it's, it's, the torture is, is a way of Indonesia doing it in everyday life, when I was as a journalist, I seeing it in, in, in the street, how they, they search people demonstrat demonstratively in a public in order to, to stop uh, people's fight for self-determination, scaring people by doing publicly. Thank you so much for sharing the historical context. Can you share with us a bit about the history of West Papua? How do we get to where we are today? And how have the people of West Papua stood up for self-determination over the centuries in the face of colonizing forces? Yes, yeah, so we become uh, part of uh, Indonesia or colonized by Indonesia simply because Dutch colonized uh, Indonesia. So when Indonesia claimed independence from, West, uh, from Dutch, they said West Papua is our nation. There is no root uh, whatsoever with the uh, uh, Indonesian, uh, there's no Papuans fight for independence. And the, the, the Papuans know the, the, the behavior of Indonesia to, to, uh, to West Papuans, which is, uh, you know, well, they always see us as, uh, as uh, subhuman, really as a uh, human. As, and, and then the United States of America uh, also, because of they want to dig the gold mining, through the Freeport McMoran, the Dutch are, are research uh, that they found about this mountain of uh, gold. Uh, therefore, the Freeport McMoran uh, control uh, the, the policy uh, and uh, the, the contract between Dutch, I mean the Indonesian government and uh, Freeport McMoran was signed one year before West Papuans give opportunity to exercise supposed to be supposed to be right of self determination, which is end up only handpick uh, one thousand and twenty five uh, Papuans in a, in a gunpoint. They they have to uh, choose uh, whether it be part of Indonesia or they uh, are killed. And 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 therefore, when this UN uh, ambassador. Who organized this uh, act of no choice or this time report to the UN um, uh, about it? Uh, the Indonesian government cannot get enough number uh, to, uh, you know, uh, claim the, um, sovereignty of West Papua. It was only talk no, take note, recognizing that this such thing is happening. And so, therefore, Indonesia doesn't have. A, legal authority, legal authority to sovereign West Papua. And we have a right to put back our, our rights of determination to United uh, Nations. 
Otto, so, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, saying that the interest of the United States of America to read off this agenda uh, from the UN, and then uh, the the Kennedy administration to get the Indonesian support uh, to, uh, you know, defeat the uh, Eastern Bloc uh, communist idea out of the, the territory. That's why the Indonesian, I mean, the John F. Kennedy administration facilitate this New York agreement, uh, you know, uh, brokered by um, um, uh, American ambassadors. And then uh, U.S. also behind uh, or restricted in such a way so that the, the U.N. troops that sent to West Papua uh, was from Pakistani Muslims uh, were very close with the Indonesia. So from the beginning, when the U.N. was there, uh, the Indonesians uh, really exercised banning all the political party, put their present to these uh, Papuans with, with under, under, you know, UN, United Nations witnessing this. Uh, and then under that situation, then they had pick uh, 125%. And then when the, in the 1960, uh, when the uh, Act um, uh, 69, uh, the Act was um, uh, implemented, the uh, Nixon, uh, President Nixon, intentionally visited Southeast Asia, uh, and and so he brought all in, uh, international uh, media uh, to away from uh, Indonesia to cover uh, the how the United the United States of America are behind uh, violation that of the international uh, uh, agreement that are practicing by uh, Indonesian uh, to take over West Papua uh, to be colonized by uh, by Indonesia. So that's, that's a whole uh, his, in, you know, collaboration of uh, Dutch who hand over to once they sign the agreement in, uh, um, uh, in, in the New York agreement, they just, they just hand off for, because for them it's just like, you know, what's the, their face, they don't want to give it to, straight to Indonesia, therefore they need to use these UN. So, and that's it, once they gain what, what they want, they, they, they don't care. Thank you for the interconnectedness insights, but also really highlighting how torture has actually been a part of the entire process since the beginning. And you really yeah. make a compelling case for why we must understand the path forward on self-determination, one with the Committee of 24 on decolonization, but also through the other UN institutions to guarantee, to protect and promote human rights in West Papua. Can you share with us why you believe this issue though is so important in international human rights law and its central and core to the global arena as we go forward? Yes, uh, if we call, uh, you know, ourselves, human being. If we call ourselves, uh, you know, we respect that dignity. If we call ourselves as a nation that upholds the law, and uh, there's no other than, you know, uh, recognize uh, this situation. And, and really, uh, it is a moral responsibility of those countries who are involved. If United States of America have a moral responsibility, if you are um, uh, Dutch, have a moral responsibility. If you UN as an institution have a moral responsibility, this is this is a time for them uh, to take the issue. So why now? And it's urgent because now Indonesian uh, uh, extended their colonization policy uh, and wiping us as soon as uh, Papuans as fast as they can and and uh, through. One, the Indonesian government divided Papua into two provinces. The population of West Papua has to save, uh, six provinces. From one province in uh, 2000, uh, 2000, then they divided into two. And the last year, they divided and added a fourth province. So you have a sixth province. Uh, and then through these six provinces, a huge militarization is taking place. There will be a military command line in six provinces. You have a uh, six um, 
a two star general, and then you know, and the number of, of one star uh, in so many, you know, it was about one, the, 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 you know, um, battalion and special forces. Uh, they are, are moving to uh, to or to to West Papua only to control, only to control less than two point uh, two and a half million Papuans in our land. They're from the West Pap the population right now. We have a five million uh, population. The Papuans in the Indigenous are only two million. So my challenge back to the United States of America. You know, the President Barack uh, Obama said in his speech uh, that sovereignty is not a license to, to, to slaughter uh, uh, people. President Barack Obama knows this, this uh, violence. You know, it was started when he was a young man in Jakarta. Uh, and he knows what's going on to these black people. Uh, and, and therefore, as a, uh, you know, a democratic uh, leader, as, as a president, he, as a black man, he's supposed to have a moral dignity to take up the, you know, Hillary Clinton already, you know, mentioned it very um, clearly in Hawaii on when he was at, as, a, as a foreign minister. He said, West Papua is a political issue. Therefore, the way out is a political uh, way out. And, and so... Uh, it is a time for Democratic Party uh, to to clean, you know, clear up ourselves because Kennedy administ administration are doing. Robert F. Kennedy was joining with Indonesian um, Catholic Party, the guy named Franceda. They are lobby pressure uh, Netherlands Catholic Party in the sake in the name of a Catholic interest, and they they say last two. So if we call ourselves Catholic, if we call ourselves Christian, and, and they have to stand up. In Indonesia today, uh, church, both the Bishop Catholic Bishop Conference and uh, the uh, Protestant, uh, uh, you know, Synod, they didn't pick up the West Papua issue. So what, what we, we, we claim in one hand, we are, respect to the holding Bible as our foundation and moral and everything. But on the other hand, you are you don't talk nothing when these Papuans are wiping out or from their land. The slow motion genocide is evident. Yale University reported about it. The Sydney University reported about it. Two special repertoires on uh, genocide prevention admitted that Indonesia is committing uh, you know, slow motion genocide. Once a mountain of human rights report at the UN uh, Human Rights Council, every year, the State Department publishes a human rights uh, uh, every, uh, every year, about, and then always about West Papua. And I just talked with the uh, State Department today, and they informed me that, uh, you know, just uh, that this week they publish. So if you have this mountain of a report and what's going on here, if you already involved, you put first place these people, and then you are allowing this slaughter, you know. So it's a, it's a, it's a, for me it's it's a you know calling back to their heart, their moral standard. Uh, whether you are a political leader, you are a minister, you are leading United Nations organization, regardless. So that's why. It is important on, on West Papua so to be tabled back at the, at the United Nations to give all Papuan's people to exercise their right uh, as a nation, their right to self-determination. Because there is no future within Indonesia for West Papua. Thank you so much for really bringing up the moral argument, the political argument, and then also really the legal argument, the international law perspective of what's so important regarding this one circumstance and condition for an important indigenous peoples of Oceania. We know torture is banned at all times and in all places, including in times of war. And it shames our societies that it remains widespread around the world. And as you're pointing out, no country is immune from this illegal incident, plaguing humanity. But prohibition of torture is absolute and can never be justified under any circumstances. 
Can you share a bit some of the experiences you had that first inspired you to care about this important issue and first campaigns you've been involved in as you've been working for self-determination for West Papua for decades? Yes, uh, I witnessed the Indonesian invade uh, uh, our territory when I was very young age in, uh, in Wagate. That's in a very high plains of uh, West Papua. Now uh, it's called Deya Regencies and uh, Central High Ground uh, Prophet. I was in an in, 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 uh, elementary school, second grade, when Indonesian troops uh, landed uh, through the parachute. Uh, and then they, they, as, a, as a colonial military, I can see how they, they uh, torture and, uh, you know, uh, put in the prison so many uh, Papuans. And 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 then uh, and then I witnessing my uncle uh, lead the wars uh, against Indonesia, rejecting act of no choice. Uh, and three months they took a uh, uh, you know war against it. And we, my uncle was waiting, uh, hoping that other prophets, other regency also join him with the uh, war. But because that the other are not doing it, so. You know, and then my said, uh, my uncle said, "That's enough." Uh, and 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 then in my uh, middle school year, I was uh, grow up in the uh, Catholic boarding school in Abepura. That's in the capital city of Jayapura. And and then I witnessing how the military killing our uh, people in the, in a in in forest. They put in the uh, rice bag. Uh, like they are hunting deer or something, and then they brought that uh, body into their uh, military base, which is only uh, about a five block away from our boarding house. And I witnessed, thing, you know, uh, so many uh, our Papuans in in, in uh, you know seventies uh, and eighties, you know, uh, were uh, tortured and, and put in and in jail. You know, I mean, and, and there's so many. That's why in eighty, a thousand and thousand Papuan, three Papua New Guinea. I witnessing those. And then when 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 my in high school year, I I talk with the the first governor of West Papua, um, Elias Bonai, when he flew to to Papua New Guinea. I was I was his son's uh, uh, classmate, and and so he explained to me about this. This, this this colonial uh, um, and and uh, so and that's why when I started at the college, uh, finished the college and then I I decided to take a, 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 post, a job as a journalist. I work at the, the biggest daily uh, called Compass Daily in Indonesia, and, and through that I'm uh, writing and lobbying. In in the Suharto era, you cannot write everything. So what I do on this moment, you know, I write a couple of uh, articles, but the rest of the, the situation, I channeling and lobby through the embassy. I gave it the, all this information to uh, my uh, foreign journalist friends. I send it to uh, many uh, international uh, human rights institutions that is include uh, Amnesty International, Papal in, in, in the United Kingdom. And so, you know, um, from the beginning, from the very young age, I know Indonesia is the colonizer. I know that they are coming to wipe us out because they are they are hurting these people, really because of very simple thing. Like if they are lose, you know, you know, like in a game, if they are about to lose, they will torture Papuans in order to 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 win. And so, so um, you know, that's why I spent a. Uh, 13 years of fighting as a journalist in, in many ways, and until I was uh, banned by Indonesian government to travel for the national security, so I came to this country in the United States of America in 1999 and continue, uh, you know, speak out about uh, this uh, human wow. rights. Yeah, you're showing how all the human rights in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights are interconnected. Article 19 on freedom of the media and the press and how important it is to inform and educate people. But then also after one has done everything they can to organize inside the country, that there's also 
the freedom of movement, Article 13, and freedom of migration and asylum seeking, because one, of course, must have to protect one's right to life. But as you share these examples, it points out you've used many of the articles in the UDHR to try to make sure that the basic rights and fundamental freedoms of your fellow West Papuans are actually able to be upheld and make sure that the really respect, protect, and more importantly, fulfillment of these rights must be attained and how you've been utilizing every article of the UDHR to accomplish that. Every state must eradicate the conditions and circumstances conducive to these practices, and every country must incorporate legal safeguards into domestic laws to prevent these conditions from arising and to put the rights of victims to redress and rehabilitation. Can you share any positive examples of how West Papuans have been able to utilize either the ASEAN mechanisms or the international UN human rights procedures? I know you were at the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues last week and this week. Can you share some of the most important ways that you've been able to access justice through advocacy? The the, uh, we are using uh, uh, the international mechanism. One, uh, we really grateful to have a, a Pacific Island countries and uh, organization who channeling our uh, struggle in international mechanism. Secondly, we use the um, UN Human Rights Mechanism through the Geneva. We have a strong solidarity group there. It, it was uh, called. ICP, International Coalition for West Papua, and then now uh, there's a, it, it changed into humanitarian monitoring. Every month, every uh, they publish the record. And so we have a building of, uh, you know, mountain of the human rights report uh, in the US, um, Geneva. And we follow with, under their guidance, we send a report, we send participating in the all the uh, mechanism. And then we have a um, the countries from Asia, Caribbean, and Pacific, ACP, uh, the great secretaries is in, in Brussels. Those countries also raise our issues. The, the next one uh, is uh, the indigenous uh, permanent forum at the United uh, Nations. The West Papuans are founder of that uh, forum through Victor Kaisepo, uh, who is really uh, inspiring other nations. He traveled uh, in Amazon, in Africa, uh, really inspiring. And I was so pleased to, you know, because I am I know the history that we West Papuans found this institution. Because in, from 1999, when I arrived in the United States of America, uh, every year, Akata Victor, uh, late Victor Kaisepo, will come to you to US. And that's why I knew so many of the, the founders, which include uh, the um, special repertoire. When I see him uh, uh, two days ago, the first question he asked me, where is the victor? Uh, and, and so, and then, you know, we discussed and he advising us to use all mechanism uh, that, that we uh, available. Uh, uh, Hana, the, uh, the uh, expert, um, you know, he also gave us uh, so many, uh, uh, you know, tools, the mechanism that, that we can uh, use. So uh, from this year uh, on, we will use all mechanisms uh, under the uh, United Nations to build uh, our case, our suffering. And, and uh, that where that's where I come, come back to uh, Hawaii. I will be there in uh, in uh, June, really to uh, build the, uh, uh, you know, looking for support so that in the in a, in a Pacific, because this is a Pacific issue, therefore the senators uh, and then uh, House of Representatives from Hawaii, they're supposed to bring West Papua issue as a Pacific issue to the United States of America. It is the moral responsibility of the United States of America to, to fix this issue. Because it is not only a historical record, it is ongoing uh, uh, crisis. It is an ongoing slow motion genocide. If we, United States of America, ignore it, then we also committed uh, indirectly to supporting Indonesia to wipe West Papuan people out of our land.
very powerfully stated and also summarizes so really accurately what's been going on and for how long it's been happening. What is really also extremely powerful is the compelling case you're making for West Papuan right of self-determination, common article one of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, as well as the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, and the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, Article 3. It was also great to hear Victor Caicepo. I know I'd been with him for decades as well, as he would bring those cases forward at the UN in New York, at the UN in Geneva, anywhere possible in The Hague as well, including Brussels with the European mechanisms. What's also very important, though, and I think that's what you raised as you were talking with the Pacific member of the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, is what's possible and how the Pacific can play a leadership role going forward. We know Vanuatu has always been an advocate for the right of self-determination and been working to make sure that West Papua can bring their case forward in the Pacific Island Forum. Maybe you could share a bit about that as you talked about coming to Hawaii for the Festival of the Pacific and how the Pacific can be an important role to bring West Papua there. Yes. Uh, uh, in June, there will be a Pacific Festival in, in, in Hawaii. Uh, and uh, I'm, uh, uh, I will be bringing uh, more people, uh, Papuans there, uh, really to build our case to our uh, uh, Pacific Islanders, but particularly uh, to uh, our Hawaiians. Uh, about about West Papua, and what we really would like to do is, you know, West Papua as a as an issue uh, is it's always be, uh, in the type table of a Pacific Island Forum since uh, 2014, 15. You know, in 2015, I lead the United Liberation Movement for West Papua in Port Moresby. The leaders, uh, you know, put it. Uh, West Papua issue as a permanent uh, issue. Uh, the human rights issue is, uh, will be discussed every uh, year meeting. That was a work of uh, Max Taylor. He was so powerful as a secretary general and then supported by these member countries, especially from uh, the Melanesian, Polynesian, and the Micronesian together. That's where put us, our issue become priority now. The, 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 the only things that are not happening now is our two senators, our two congressmen in Hawaii are not taking this. This is a, it is not a, a calling for West Papua. This is a calling from Pacific Island leaders. And therefore, they, are they supposed to, these uh, senators, supposed to bring West Papua as a Pacific issue to the United States of Congress, to the United States of government, uh, to be voice uh, like used to Congressman any Palomea Fanga do it alone for, for so many, many years until he passed away. And so uh, through this meeting, uh, and, and, and I'm really hoping our solidarity and the listener everywhere to support us uh, calling your uh, the office of uh, senators and congressmen uh, in Hawaii so that they take a West Papua issue as uh, their uh, main issue uh, in their position, in their, their term as, as, a, as a senator and House of Congress. Thank you so much, Otto, for sharing why Article 5 of no one being subject to torture or cruel inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment is such a priority. We thank you so much for giving us insight into the West Papua case for self-determination. And thank you also for all the work that you do for human rights around the world. Mahalo. Mahalo.